We are going to log in as our HR professional. Once we log in, we're going to navigate through the navigator to our page, Workforce Administration, Assignment Tracking, Unit Slotting. Unit slotting is done based on the UIC of that you want to work with. We are going to insert our UIC. You are able to include the hierarchy, the units above and or below yours, um, depending on what you want to work within. There is a maximum row, number of rows of a thousand. So if in your hierarchy, you end up with more than a thousand rows, you do have to reduce that. Um, I'm not going to include the hierarchy today. I'm going to click on filter. This is running a query and pulling back all of the service members and all of the vacant positions for our UIC. I'm going to click on view all. There are 17 service members that are in our UIC. This is just the radio button in front is just how we're going to select members. We'll just turn one on. Um, swap. This allows you to swap the position numbers of two service members. We'll walk through an example of that. Compare allows you to compare the person profile of your service member to the position profile of the position you want to move them into. The next few columns are related to the service member. You have the employee ID, name, grade, AOC or MOS, if they're in a component category, their duty status, and then the position that they currently exist in in the assignments module. The next set of rows are related to the position that they are currently in. It has the description, the business unit, UIC, location, grade, job code, paragraph number, line number, whether or not it's AGR position, and the title. This little person icon allows you to open the person profile related to the service member. The profile includes ASI, SQI, MOS, as well as any self-professed items that the soldier has added to their record. This icon allows you to pull up the Soldier Talent Profile, or STP, on the member. And this icon allows you to look at the profile information related to the position. So this would be the MOS, ASI, SQI, and any required security clearances or languages that has been brought over through AOS. On the right hand side is your vacant list of vacant positions. Again, you have the radio button so you can select one and all the same information that you have on the left side. You're also able to look at the position profile information for this position. So to do unit slotting, we need to select a service member and then select a position we would like to move them into. So I am going to take soldier here with Ample ID 142 and I am going to move them into a vacant position. I'm going to do a search for that position because there are so many of them. I want to type it in here. And so here's my position. Once I have them identified, I'm going to hit add to slot. What that does is it opens up a new grid here down below that includes the employee ID name, the current position and the description and the slotted position and description. So this is where they are now and this is where they're going to. So we're also going to move the soldier 056. And we're going to move them. I'm also going to use the looking glass to look up their position number. So I have the 
service member and the position selected, and I'm going to add them to the slot. So you'll see that my new service member I just selected has also been added. You will notice as I add them to the slot, it reduces the number of service members and vacant positions that I am able to work with so that you can't accidentally reslot someone, the same person twice or this, use the same vacant position more than once. So we're gonna try to do a slot or swap. Um, there are rules built in to make sure that soldiers meet any criteria that are needed by grade or AOC MOS. So I'm gonna pick two that won't pass a rule so that we can see that happen. So here I have an E1 soldier who's currently in an E4 position. I'm not sure but about that, but I'm gonna swap them with an E6 soldier and an E6 position, which should generate an error on when I hit add to slot, you're going to see that it pops up that I have an invalid slot, right? First of all, for my service member, that's the E6, it's saying that I'm trying to put them into a position that requires them to be E1 through E5 to be in the grade of E4, and currently they're in E6, so they do not qualify. It's also telling me that the other service member can only go into a position that's two grades below or two grades above the position grade. And since we're moving them, trying to move them into an E4 position, they also fail the criteria. Now we know sometimes you still have to make the change even though it comes up with the edits, it may require a waiver. Um, so we're allowed to bypass the failed rules. I'm gonna go ahead and say yes here just to show you that those two service members have now been added to our, our grid down below. Swapping positions. So in order for us to execute the changes, we first need to create an effective date. This is the date that it will be effective in the ACT module. I'm just gonna pick today's date, but you should do it based on what is needed, and it can be either in the past or in the future or today's date. The system allows for any of those options. We're going to go ahead and say execute to run the code. So we have this pop-up that comes up that says their date is out of range for our service member who ends in 151. So what this means is that there's something going on in the assign as in an assignment and so therefore they cannot be moved through slotting. So what this says is we either need to remove them from slotting or we need to go in and modify their current assignment and try slotting again. We are just gonna go ahead and remove them from slotting at this time so we can do that research at another time to see what's going on. So I'm gonna select that employee ID, that's the problem, and I'm gonna hit remove from slot. So as you see, what happened is two, service members were removed from the slot. Remember, we were doing a swap with 151, and as a result, because I removed one of them, the other one had to be removed because there would not be a position for them to go into. I am going to try to execute this again. It takes a little while for it to, to work. It is going in and it is making the appropriate updates in assignments. So as you can see, we now get a pop-up that says they have successfully slotted to transactions. We're going to say OK to this. Now we're going to navigate into the assignment page so that we can look at one of our soldiers. So we're going to go to R3 assignments. I'm going to enter the EMPL ID of one of the soldiers that we moved. So this soldier, we move them into a new position, and so they have a PCA reassignment. So that's the unit slotting demo. Thank you.